Life Rhythms with Ryan Sky. Observing the world around me, looking inward, trying to make sense of it all. <laughs> Welcome to Life Rhythms Radio Show. I'm your host, Ryan Skye. Life Rhythms is a radio show that revolves around my personal growth journey. As a DJ and a producer, I spend a lot of my time observing the world around me, looking inward, trying to make sense of it all. I've been doing it in song form. Now I do it on the radio show. Each episode of Life Rhythms, we feature one guest and one song or album, and I choose topics related to the music for us to talk about. I'm excited for today because I have here in the studio with me, Duran Bernard. Yes, your favorite cousin on your daddy's side in the not-so-quiet storm. Yes, that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're featuring your album, Wonderlust. Yes. The reason why I'm having Duran on, if you're new to Duran, is because, well, first, <sighs> the talent is there. I mean, you just did, you did the NPR Tiny Desk. When people hear the music, the talent is undeniable. But for me, what really resonated with me is the way that you embody yourself. Mm-hmm. And I feel like people watching this, if you, I feel like if they watch you and follow you, they could feel, in, they could find inspiration in f watching you be yourself and having that kind of be like a lesson on how they can be themselves. Absolutely. And I, I wanted to mention this too. One of my favorite TED Talks actually inspired this tattoo. It's called The Art of Being Yourself. Okay. And this, this is why I had you on the show. Like what she's talking about here. This is why I have you on the show. So in The Art of Being Yourself, and it's on YouTube if you want to watch it, she says, you, and her name is Caroline McHugh. Okay. She says, when you look at remarkable individuals, you'll find the thing they have in common is they have nothing in common. I think we all come complete, she says. We come complete with one true note we were destined to sing. And these are people that managed to figure that out. But most of us don't take up nearly the space the universe intended for us, which is why when you see somebody in the full flow of their humanity, it's remarkable. People who are frightened to be themselves will work for those who aren't afraid. And the last thing she says is your only job while you're here on the planet is to be as good at being you as they are at being them. I'm with you when you're right. And that's that's when I ha that's why I have you on because you're really good at being you. Oh yeah, I, like I said, I don't know how to be anybody else, <laughs> and everybody else is taken. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So we're gonna talk about the music. We're gonna talk about your experience doing the Tiny Desk, growing up in music, um, working with Erica Badu, mm -hmm. going on tour with her, Kate Trinata, all these things. Mm -hmm. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back here with Duran Bernard. All right. Welcome back to Life Rhythms Radio Show. I am your host, Ryan Sky, Adobe Family. I've got in the studio with me, Duran Bernard. Oh, yes. How's it going? We want put the mic to your as close to you so we can hear that beautiful voice. There we go. Sometimes I feel like Ursula. You uh, know, yeah. like oh, sing to me, you know, like I just want it all. Yes. No, right there. Is that good? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay, perfect. So for those of you who are new to Duran, I'm gonna tell you real quick why I have you on the show. You're a singer songwriter, comedian. I mean, yeah, funny as fuck. But the reason why I want to have you on the show, and for people who don't know about you, why I think they'll be interested in you, and what I want to talk about is you. Ha you managed to live. You fully, you fully embody yourself in a way that most people don't, and I think in in a way that most people admire and most people want to. You know, yeah. like people listening. So, you know, when you see that, that's the, you see every, it's rare, but you see every once in a while, you'll see somebody that's like just fully themselves. Not only that, but they figured out who they are, what they want to do. They figured out their talents and they're, they're, they're lame. They're lame. Yeah. And they're fully at the, sur they're like, f it's fully at the service of like their life and, and society. Yeah. Almost like you go on stage and you, it's nothing that you have to turn on. You're just. It's more like a car being on. Yeah. It's just about what gear is it in. Mm, yes. Yeah. I'm going to turn up your mic audio a little bit. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Yes. One, two, check. Woo! Yes. Yes, there's the world. I have to say, actually, um, also, you and I have somebody in common. My best, best, best friend in the whole world is Day Bogan. Oh, <laughs> ah, ah, ah. yay! That is my 
actual cousin. Yes. On my father's side. Oh my God. Is it really? <laughs> and, and you got to say, you, can you say that? You, okay. Who are you? Like say this thing. Yes. No. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm Duran Bernard. Yeah. The, but the not so quiet storm. And your favorite cousin on your daddy's side. Yes. So Favorite cousin on your daddy's side. And you're literally the cousin on his daddy's side? Yes. Oh, I absolutely. love that. Yeah. It was funny because when he originally reached out um, to me uh, before I came out to L.A., I didn't, I, we hadn't met. And so he had moved, he had moved away before, you know, we had had an opportunity to kind of bond and whatnot back in Cleveland. So... When I got the email, when I got the the Facebook message from him, I was just like, I don't know who he is, like you know. <laughs> oh really? You didn't, did you even know it was your cousin at first? I, you just... I think no, I figured I did, but I also have you know you know how people just kind of reach out randomly, and I'm just like, okay, what what do you need? Mm. And so my dad had to enter me. He was like, no, nah, like y'all your y'all grandmothers were sisters, like that's your that's your cousin. So and he and he does X Y and Z, y'all you know. So it was just like okay, and then of course we ended up meeting and he gave me the whole spiel and rundown of what he does and it's it's dope i'm 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 really proud of us you know i'm yeah 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 because he talks about how when he first moved here he didn't have like a place to live and Mm -mm. he just started out he has such a grinding mindset yes so that he can get to a place where he can be comfortable you know and just how meticulous and anal he is just yes. like even right down to the food yeah <laughs> it's like i just asked for you know uh some eggs and some avocado toast and it's this like smorgasbord of just all these different <sighs> options like you can tell he really loves what he does did you stay with him when you first moved here um or- i stayed with him a couple times when i was just here visiting and then another time when i was what i call on couch ministries Yes. Yeah. Can we talk about this? Because I had on the floor ministries. Mm. When I first moved to LA, I stayed with my friend and I literally slept on his floor for th- four months. Re- you met Remix, my dog. Mm-hmm. Hardwood floors, me and Remix on like blankets for months with like my friend and his wife would wake up in the morning and they would literally have to like step over us. Mm. To go to work. Yeah. And it was just because I had nothing going on here. Like, I am tr- had no gigs. I had I was new. Yeah. No, I've been on the floor ministries. I had a mattress in the corner in the living room. Yeah. And they put a partition right there for me. Oh, so, so it was cute. that's cozy. Yeah. I love that. Mm-hmm. Was this you? Was this before or after you started working with Erica Badu? This was after. So you had already toured with her? Yeah. I started touring with her when I was 22. I didn't okay. move out to LA until... That was 2011 when I got with her. I didn't move out to LA until December of 2014. So going into 2015 yeah, is when I moved out here. And what, what brought you to LA? I just wanted to be in a, in a more productive environment for what I was trying to do. Yeah. Um, I felt like I was, you know, a shark in a pond where there were other sharks there mm. that either left or they were comfortable, you know, there. And I was just like, being popular at the local karaoke joint or the the jam session, like that's cool for a little bit, but after a while you want to branch out and, you know, it's almost like I could almost compare it to not wanting to go to college in your home state or your home city. Yeah. You know, go out somewhere where of your choosing, you know. So I felt like I gave my city more than enough of myself, you know, and it's a great place to to grow up in, but it's also a great place to move away from as well. Yes. This episode is brought to you by Mixillary.com. I'm excited to have Mixillary on as a sponsor personally because Mixillary is a platform that you can use to find and hire someone to remix your song. And why that's so important is because anybody can go online and you can search music producers, you can search for remixers, you can hire somebody, but it's like, how much do you pay them and who should you hire and what genre should you choose? And with option overload, it can be a little overwhelming to figure out what's the best use of your money. Because what it comes down to is remixes are marketing tools. A remix of a record will get that record in front of a larger audience. It will get that record played in venues and areas like the gym or a club or, you know, car or a fitness studio, places that maybe your original song may not be appropriate for. So it is an important marketing tool, but then who remixes it is important because first of all, the quality of the remix and also maybe they have their own audience that's going to discover this remix. Maybe they have a following. Maybe they have a radio show. Maybe they tour and they'll be playing it out live. These are all sorts of things that are important. So Mixillary is a service 
that will help match you with the best remixer for your budget. So check out mixillery.com for more information on this. I Yeah, I feel you, know? you on that. This reminds me, I was in church over the weekend. I go to Mosaic in Hollywood mm -hmm. and he was talking about how, I, I, didn't, I didn't really think about this, but that the people, the pioneers that were trying to come to California, not everybody made it to California and mm -hmm. some of them stopped in like Wyoming and Idaho and the state's prior to California and they settled mm -hmm. there and he was like there's settlers and there's pioneers like the pioneers made it to California the settlers didn't quite make it and they stayed and they settled in those states yeah and I don't, I'm just I don't know why I just thought about that there's something about you moving to LA I feel like it's that it's yeah. you knew like you were not a settler yeah and you needed to c come out here to like take that next step well there are certain areas where it's okay to settle because the word settle isn't a bad word it means to get acclimated with your surroundings and get comfortable. Yeah. Now, if you if if you if you are getting the best out of your environment and you can be your best self and, and grow in that way, then yes, by all means, be in that environment, but if you feel you need more, then you should venture for more, you know. Yeah, yeah, we and we need we need settlers and we need pioneers. Mm -hmm. Not everyone should be the same thing. No. Right? Right. When when you moved out here did you have did you have an idea of how it was going to go or did you kind of know what you were getting yourself into I just knew that I was going to be crashing with someone for an undetermined amount of time and I wanted to make sure that I got myself in a position where I could have my own and this was the first time that I was actually living on my well I still wasn't on my own because I had a roommate um but just outside of Cleveland, you know, there's only but so much that you can grow living under, you know, your folks' roof, even if y'all do get along and it's, you know, we're friends and, you know, um, peers in some kind of way when it comes to adulting and, you know, moving through life. Um, still, there's a certain cap when you have to abide by someone else's rules. So mm. moving out and, and, and getting my own spot um, definitely expanded you know the the growth cap yeah yeah did you feel like you were able to come into your own more out here because for me personally living under my parents roof i felt i didn't feel like i started to figure out to learn who i was and discover myself until i left the house mm -hmm. yeah. and came out of the closet and accepted myself you know like all that stuff. that's so cool that you actually were able to have a closet i, I feel like mine was a walk-in like just it was there you know i didn't have an opportunity to yeah you never came out because you were just always I'm yourself just always myself you were blessed with an upbringing where your parents nurtured you from a young age like they just they let you be who you are and they're both musicians mm -hmm. right yeah they're both your mom's a, a vocal coach and pianist yeah. mm -hmm. dad does audio audio engineer and he also played the bass plays the bass mm -hmm. I really need to get him out of re re retirement because oh. he hasn't touched that bass in years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does he turn in, does he have like, does he light up when he plays? <laughs> you know. Does he have like swag and light up? Like what, what happens to him? Anything that, that my dad does, it has character and, you know, charisma to it. You know, he used to model as well. Okay. He, he was one of the first uh, black models that ever made it into a Sears catalog back in the 80s. Oh. Yeah, he was also on um, greeting cards and. and, and did he like know that. that he was the first when mm -hmm. it happened? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, they've lived. <laughs> yeah, they and he took you on tour with Earth, Wind, and Fire mm -hmm. when you were how like you were sixteen, sixteen, mm -hmm. and you were a production assistant. Yeah, and not only that, I was an assistant to uh, the merch um, person as well. They had me doing manual labor plus. Uh, Taking people's orders at the end of the at, at, at the end of the evening, um, replenishing the the buses with ice and the snacks that we had in the and there was oh yeah they would put me to work. Did that seem normal to you, or were you like oh this is what other kids are doing, or did you know like this is not that common? My experience right now. I knew that my experience was different because I had friends who went to public school or went to private school, and you know, but I also had friends that were homeschooled yeah. like me as well the difference between them and me was at some point they were either in school or they um, they were out of it. And then, you know, there was the homeschooling. I was just homeschooled, period. Okay. Um, so 
I was also doing my, you know, my schoolwork on on the road as well. You know, my mom would send certain things for me to complete and send back to her. So, I mean, but I'm, this is also a learning environment as well because this is preparing me for the life that I'm currently mm, living. You know, I was a, yeah. I, I was able to be a part of the system, you know, that puts these things together. And so now I go from being a part of the system to being the head of the system. Yeah, I never really thought about that until now. One of the things I struggled with was I was in I was in private and public schools, but all the way through college, I had everyone telling me, "You're going to go to this class, and, and this is you got to do this by this day. This is your homework," and everything was just told to me. But then I get out in the real world, and then no longer people are telling me. I had to learn to discipline myself. I had to learn to educate myself. I had to learn a lot of things of my own that I feel like your experience was different, mm. right? But also, I'm curious your you're 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 able to be nurtured at wherever levels you were at in your life, but also how did it affect socially? Like, were you still able to learn the social skills being homeschooled? And I'm so glad you asked. I'm going mm. to give you the list of the ways in which I've been socialized. <laughs> and, um, I figured, you know, can we talk about this this um, singular yellow uh, yeah. nail? Yeah, and the and the platform. it matches your hat. Yeah, just a and little and your bracelet. Something. Yeah, just a little something. Oh, and the other one's mother is like a mother of pearl mm-hmm. on your middle finger. Yeah, and the and the pinky. Oh, and the pinky. Yeah, cute. So the ways in which I was socialized, we had my parents who were forty one and thirty when I was born. What are you reading from? Uh, my notes. Your notes. Mm-hmm. Okay. My cousins and my relatives, family reunions, kids in my neighborhood, church. Other homeschool kids, other adults, Cleveland Institute of Music for Movement, the Christian Music Academy for Piano Recitals, Cleveland Playhouse for Acting, Skating Rinks, Barbershops, Discovery Zone, Chuck E. Cheese, Martial Arts, the the Poetry Scene, Open Mics, Concerts, Theater, Theme Parks, Traveling, Driving School, Dance Groups, the Ballroom Scene, Clubs, Various Jobs, Bartending School, Group Projects, Museums, (laughs) Yoga School, and of course, Social Media. Is there anything else? You know, it's like... The ways. What is this list? I'm curious. Like, what do you do? You make notes to yourself? Yeah. So I have a the 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 note itself is things that bring me pleasure. Okay. And so it's random things like laughter, music, clarity, fresh air, sunshine, traveling, peace, snacks, naps. You know, boundaries, memes, all that stuff. Yeah. And then I went into things I wish I cared about: (laughs) anime. Beer and wine, spades, plantains, sweet potatoes. Oh, plantains. Um, yeah. I can't do it. Sports, except for football in slow motion. <laughs> uh-huh. um, circuit parties. Uh-uh. Uh, oh, and, yeah. Uh-huh. In, in medieval times, I, I wish I cared. Um, I have a, I don't feel safe when I have a, last things in life I'd ever want to do, be, and or have done to me. Um, <laughs> I would be curious to, to hear from that list. That list? Okay, so mm. referring to my ass as pussy or any other iteration <laughs> of slang for the vagina, creaming, anything involving shit, Ooh. being cold, being called stink, and singing the Star Spangled Banner. Okay, okay. So well, it's yeah. good that it's on that list so yeah, you don't forget it. That part. Oh, and things I'd like to see in my lifetime. Um, let's see. Proficient reparations for black people. Mm. Um, Do you know what that would look like to you? We can first start with therapy, like free health care, like oh hell yeah, like that. Yeah, period. Just just our starting with our mental health and our physical health, and then of course some kind of efficient uh, compensation. Because if these other groups of people can be compensated, then we <laughs> so do we. Mm. Um, Female Viagra. I'd like to like be around like, how'd that work for them? You know? <laughs> um psychedelics legalized worldwide. Uh-huh. Um uh volume three of Kill Bill. Mm. Um black owned airlines and uh car dealerships, because we don't own airlines or car uh, cars at all. Um oh cameras capturing photos and video in the way that we actually see it. What do you mean? Like how you see me? Yeah. If you could take a photo and it looked just like this, not the pixelated or not the the four K, but like iris, you know? Oh, okay. Y- yeah. Even, right. But even though that is subjective, because we all don't necessarily have the exact 
same uh. vision, even if it's slight. Um, oh, and also uh, parents being sued by their children for bringing them into this overpopulated piss and shit filled swimming pool disguised <sighs> as the American oh, dream goodness. and winning. Mm. Because my thing is, if you knew that this was some bullshit, why would you bring me here? <laughs> okay. Yes. You want to see all that in your lifetime? I would like to. Okay. That would be cool. But what about things you can work on? Like, what about things you can contribute to? Hmm. I would like to contribute to, well, the 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 mental health. You know, okay. normalizing that. Um, I'm happy to hear that because this show's all about that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, letting Letting people know they don't have to be strong and hard all the time. If anything, you don't have to be that at all. Um let that be a moment by moment case. And even then I, I'm, I'm trying to, to incite peace on ourselves. A lot of times we don't have grace for ourselves. Mm. And so I try to reiterate that with people to be good to themselves, to be patient, to have patience. It all starts in here so that it can echo out what it is that you pour into yourself. Yeah. So yeah, just just making that a and just gentle reminders, you know, not to have any shame or guilt. You know, for instance, I stopped um, having this <gasps> reaction when people tell me that they haven't seen or heard something or been somewhere. Instead of doing all of that, my response is, "So when are you going? So when are you going to watch the movie?" You know, it's all of that is is unnecessary because I'm I'm making my knowledge and my experience the 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 end all be all like you have to experience this or else you know yeah like, what, uh, how dare you you know like what is wrong with you yeah that part so i i i started to eradicate that from just my reactions ah this era of your life that you're in right now what how would you title it this actually i'm th we want to do a fire q a when this is over that mm -hmm. actually would have been a good fire q a question yeah it's okay so i actually am now um having a rebuttal against this era because eras are are temporary. Okay. Uh they're momentary things. I'd like to think of what lifestyle are we are we living in? Are we living in our gentle lifestyle? Are we living in our our peaceful lifestyle? You know, are we living in our damage control lifestyle where we're only focusing on the things that we have control over? Cuz stress will literally take you the fuck up out of here. Mm. On the way here in the car, I take videos when I'm driving. <laughs> Very smart. But I had to take it because I was thinking, I read it, I, um, I read a, I read a, uh, what's it called? Scientific study mm -hmm. that just came out that said scientists found out that loneliness has the same effect on the human body as smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. Mm. And so then they were like, okay, well, um, because loneliness isn't about the qua quantity of people in your life. It's the quality. Mm -hmm. And they were like, why can someone that ha why is someone that has a lot of people in their life, why can that person feel just as lonely as someone who's isolated? And they found out that it comes down to uh, the person's ability to be open and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Because when you're open and vulnerable, then you're able to have the connections with people that then you don't feel lonely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I I often I was kind of going through I guess differ, differentiating uh loneliness versus being alone. Okay. And it's like no, we're not alone, but we do have these moments of of loneliness and it's I think it's what is it that we're longing for? Yeah. You know, it might not for me it might not be a uh, vulnerability. Uh for me it might be consistency. Mm. You know, there's a there's a longingness for maybe consistency, or um, there's a longingness for stillness. Mm. You know, where can I be still? Because there's so much You're, rapid movement. I feel so calm around you right now. I love it. <laughs> I'm like stillness. Yes, yeah. consistency. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen. <laughs> Solange, Solange told us a, a while ago that stillness is the move. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. But. It, in particular, the consistency. I want to talk about your consistency. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm grabbing my notes because since 2009, you have put out four mixtapes, three EPs, and three studio albums. Durand, 
Like that is consistent yeah. right there. Yeah. That's impressive. That's consistent. I'm like, I need to talk to him about this. Yeah. How did, how, tell me about like, how are you able to do this? How are you able to stay consistent? I think I was inspired by a few people. I was inspired by Khalees. I was inspired by Rihanna and how much content she would put out. Okay. And so I didn't know what was going to stick. You know, I just wanted to put out content for people to have. Um, the first few of them, they were, you know, strictly media fire or, you know, media share, uh, band camp. Uh, it was the Christmas EP that I put out in 2012. That was my first one that I put like on streaming. Yeah. Because uh, the other projects had a bunch of samples that I wouldn't be able to clear. Mm. And it's just, it's, it's too much. Mm -hmm. So it was more so just have this content out. And then finally, um, I started bringing other people in and working with other people who had the language to be able to give me on how to express myself. I don't have to conform to anything. There's a way for me to be commercial or reach the masses while still being my, myself, me loving it and it making sense to them. Yeah. So that was the sweet spot that I, that I found. Um, and that was in 20, end of 2015 going into 2016 when I, when I had that conversation with a homie of mine. The more I do this show and the more I'm talking to guests, I'm, I'm realizing that this 2015, 2016, that's really when I started, got started. And a lot of people I'm having on the show that are doing well in their careers, we all kind of are like, we're coming into our own starting around that time. And that was like eight years ago, right? And I think a lot of people don't realize, a lot of people want to start something and then a year or two, they're like, oh, it's not working for me. When I tell you- like, Girl, I, you know I, what I've been through in the past eight years? I've had to ring a, a, a particular homie up who's doing very well, by the way. I'm so proud of him. It's just that he would have these moments where he would get frustrated. And my thing is I'd have to remind him, how long have you been doing this? Well, I've been doing this for three years. I said, <laughs> I've been doing this 16. Yeah. And I'm just now getting yeah. seeds so that I can plant my own flowers. Oh, I love that. Shout out to Derek Dixie because that was beautiful. Um, but yeah, so I started on the road at 16. So we're already next year will be 20 years that I started my career, which is why I have such a close uh, bond with Rihanna because she came out the year that I started. I never forget seeing Ponda replay. Ponda replay. Yep. I said, I told the runner, can you please take me to the record store so I can go get this CD? And What was it about her that I, you, you resonated with? It just, it caught me immediately. It made me want to wind my hips. I loved dancing back in the day. Like I was that, I was that little boy that was recording the making of Beyonce's uh, Crazy in Love. Mm. And I'm going over the choreography because on Friday when I get to the skating ring, baby, I'm finna fuck shit up oh yes. yes and they can't tell me shit yeah so yeah that was that was me man i want to get into all that i we're gonna take a break soon but i want to get into the dancing i want we're gonna dive into the, the npr mm -hmm. we're gonna dive into npr tiny desk the iconic performance that you had and also your album wonderlust mm -hmm. songs lyrics i i go over lyrics yes. with the guests and I, I, that's one of my favorite parts and so i was listening to your songs and, you know, I'm just just going over them and thinking about, like, which ones am I curious to talk to him about printing out lyrics? And I'm looking at some of these lyrics and I'm like, oh, my God, like, <laughs> what? Some of them, I'm like, what are these lyrics? Like, I have to ask him about these. These are fantastic. I, I already know their mango butter is definitely it's in, in there. But that's I'm, what I'm, I'm curious at the other ones that I have because I was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, we're going to dive into all this with Duran Bernard right oh. here on Adobe Radio. Hey. Welcome back to Life Rhythms Radio Show. I'm your host, Ryan Skye, and I've got my guests with me in the studio. We're back with Duran Bernard. Oh, yeah. We're fanning ourselves with this beautiful merchandise he gave me with his face on it. Yeah, you got to have a church fan. This church fan, this this reminds me of when I first saw you. <laughs> I first saw you in a in a Terrell show video. Oh yes, and it popped up on my, on my feed, and there you are singing "Say My Name, Say My oh, Name." Yes, yes, right, yes. 
And just seeing you in all your glory, the Duran experience. Mm -hmm. But there was just something in that video. I mean, it was the voice. Yes, it was the voice. It was the personality. And I just it, I just felt like I saw you. I'm like, oh, he. he this is a light. I want to have him on the show. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mentioned in the in the previous section, previous um, segment mm -hmm. about your. NPR Tiny Desk. Yes. Must have been such an awesome moment. And I want to talk about that on the show because that was such an iconic thing that you've done, that performance. And I have here a quote from NPR, mm -hmm. which can give listeners an idea of what to expect. Yes. And also, it's, it's kind of clear to me that whoever wrote this is not part of the queer community because they say you, you go into a dip at the end. And I'm like, that was a death drop. No, it's called a dip. No. No, it's called a I dip. I thought you did a death drop. It's called a dip. Oh, really? Yes. RuPaul, the, the oh, whole really? drag show has appropriated. Tell me, well, tell the, me about the this then. Yeah, no, nah, death drop is. No, wait, wait, wait. So is death drop different or is that just not anything? So, uh, so from what I've been told, death drops are actually in uh, the majorettes, like the, like the J setters, where they actually like do, there's a different style of which they do it. But no, our in, in Voguing, it's called a dip. No shit. Mm -hmm. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow, okay. So maybe I'm wrong. Well, I'm clearly wrong. <laughs> clearly. I'm clearly wrong. Because when I read that, I was like a dip. Because in my mind, I think of like ballroom dancing and when you just dip the girl back. Oh, yeah. No, we call them dips. And I'm like, they didn't just dip him back. He went to the floor and the leg went up. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> That's good to know. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this is what NPR had to say about your performance. Mm -hmm. This is in the description on their YouTube. I'm going to continue fanning myself because I'm just really enjoying this. This is so fun. All right. So they say Duran Bernard is an experience. At the tiny desk, members of his band, clad in costumes evoking characters from the Disney Channel animated series, The Proud Family, surrounded Bernard, outfitted in a white and magenta sequined ensemble with a wig, styled in a pompadour, channeling the electric energy of the soul and funk singer of the proud family, Uncle Bobby. Mm -hmm. More than an experience, Bernard is a skilled singer. He's gained a following from his catchy albums, his time spent backing Erica Badu on tour, and his appearances on BET programming. His voice jumps from robust baritone to clear falsetto with ease. Those are the main things. Oh, I also like that they say, they have a quote from you where you, they said, Bernard told the Tiny Desk team, I'm not meant to be understood. I'm meant to be experienced. Mm -hmm. I love that. I imagine not many Tiny Desk experiences wrap up like his did with a shirtless performer going into a dip mm -hmm. and Diana Ross in mahogany style twirls and then weaving his way through the audience, supplying hugs and high fives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bernard. <laughs> oh my God, Duran. I watched the NPR performance last night and I was borderline like overwhelmed. Mm. I was having all these like, I was in my feelings and I was so just in awe. And there was, there were a lot of moments where I was, I found myself saying like, wow, damn. Wow. Like I just, and the other thing too, I didn't realize till halfway through was I had uh, the setting on 1.25 speed. <laughs> and I didn't realize it at first. So it was a little faster. It was faster because I had watched another video, uh, per, like I guess previously in the day, and the setting I guess stays from video to video. Gotcha. So here you are, and you're up there, and you're you know you're dancing, and you're turning around, and you're conducting people, and you're and I was just like, oh my god! This, but it was like lighting my brain. I, you have to watch it fast. That is hilarious. It's fantastic. Definitely. And then I slowed it down, of course, and I watched the rest. Yes. <laughs> But I just want to talk to you about that because it would, to me it was like a master class. <sighs> I've I've been told I I love that I love that I can get that kind of response for being my fourth consecutive show, yeah. and I had two more to do after that in a row. Um, we so we had been on the road for. Three weeks by that point. So we were already really locked in. So we just needed to do an abbreviated version of what I was already doing on tour. And then my my friends who I had seen background for me, they actually sang on my very first tour yeah. in 2016 when I was using 
uh, local bands in each city, you know, but they would come with me. And we had one rehearsal. Yeah, and the, oh my God, the harmonies, how, how locked in you all were. Tank from Tank and the Bangers called me and she said, your background singers were like you, but with different voices. Oh my God, yes. He's like, Everyone was and wigs. locked in. Okay, and wigs. <laughs> when I tell you, no, the real star of, of that tiny desk was La Cienega's Bob, but they ain't ready for that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. The piano player. The, I mean, all the all of the musicians in there. I was just, I was stunned. Yeah. I was stunned. And, but, and to you, again, you had such a command of your body I mean, it literally is a tiny space, the tiny desk. And just watching you, the command that you had of your voice and your dancing and your, your, you're like the conductor, you're cueing the background singers, you're cueing the, the, uh, the musicians and, and oh my, oh my God, I loved your little percussion instrument. Oh yeah. You would just pick it up and yeah. put it down and <laughs> And then you bend over and you smack your butt um, in in line with the drummer. Uh-huh. I'm like, this is epic. This is fabulous. Yeah, uh, every everything has intention. And I was telling the band when I got with them to record just a bunch of different ideas back in February of last year. I want the drums to make me move. I want my shoulders to be able to pop with the snare. Like I want, like, that's the kind of thing I want. And so we were able to, to create that. And so live, because I'm, I'm locked in with what's going on in the drums, I move with it. And it just creates this whole other relationship within this gumbo. Like just, it's, it's so many things. And I'm, I'm just, it really, even though if I was an instrument, I would be the bass. And the reason I would be the bass guitar is, number one, the bass can hold its own. Uh. It can create bounce or it can create a groove. Yeah, um, It can change the chord of something yeah. Yeah, yeah. by just switching going down mm-hmm. here instead of going right mm-hmm. there. And last but not least, you never feel sad. When you hear the bass. Oh, interesting. Can, you can weep for a violin, a harp, the piano, a, a, a lead guitar. But when it comes to the bass, it's... That's true. Mm. How would you even make a bass sad? I don't even know. It's... I, I wouldn't know. And I have a pocket it's like It's like a, a warm hug. It's yeah. Like... Yeah. And my pocket is like a drummer. So both of those things are, are, are in line. How much time did you have to prepare for... When did you find out? When were you invited to be on? This was before... So I was originally invited to do a home tiny desk back in 2020. Yeah. Uh, but Bobby, shout out to Bobby, uh, said, no, we need him here. We need him behind the desk. So let's just wait. And yeah. so when they found out I was coming to D.C. on that run earlier this year, they said, would you be able to come after your D.C. show? And so after I did three shows... I did Tiny Desk the very next afternoon at 2 p.m. And then by 5.45, I'm on a flight heading to Atlanta. (laughs) How much of that performance, because you're dressed like Uncle Bobby from Mm -hmm. the Proud Family. How much of that is Duran and how much of that was Uncle Bobby? Or is is Uncle, or do you always feel like part of Uncle, like Uncle Bobby's part of you? Oh, well. Like your kindred spirits in some way. Well, so it's, it goes deeper than Uncle Bobby. Yeah. Uh, Uncle Bobby is just a component of all of the different characters that I was wearing on the tour. I was uh, the mask um, in the yellow suit. I was Carmen San Diego. I was Popeye. But, I was but you had a name Juice. for Carmen. Carmen. Carmen Ran Diego. Carmen Ran Diego. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, oh, oh, and Freddie Queerger. Yeah, with, with the with hands. The, yes, like that. That was my inner child. <laughs> Freddie Queerger. My inner child. Let me tell you, he... The, the little boy in me was not able to uh, uh, trick or treat when I was growing up. You know, mm-hmm. my, my mother was not having that. So because I'm in touch with my inner child and my inner teenager, I anytime that they're either triggered or 
there's something that pops up that excites them, you know, I acknowledge that, you know. So I just asked, okay, do you want to dress up? Because we can do that. <laughs> and he's like, yes, okay, this is who I want to be. This is who I want to be. And so in in throughout the 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 tour, I dressed up and it was me inviting you to my the imagination of my inner child. And as Teron Austin said, you are using the audience as rattles and you are shaking us and taking us on oh, this cool. adventure yeah. of of just pure just pure imagination. So he was just one of the the conduits to that. And of course the the seventies old soul aspect of Uncle Bobby is me all day. I I I would have definitely been up at Studio 54 cutting up. Mm -hmm. Probably would have not done the book of sugar, but everything else, probably, yes. Did you have an un Uncle Bobby type guy? person in your family that kind of archetype i mean my father is a singer and he's a, a comedian on the low mm -hmm. so and but all the family is funny in some kind of way and you know so there's that aspect like my grandmother taught you know the choir at her church you know my mother was teaching the choir at at, at, at our church you know so there's all of you i feel like i had a disposition a yeah. predisposition to music and when you're putting on the Uncle, Bo when you're putting on the outfits, not even just that, because you said it's not just about Uncle Bobby, but any of these outfits, these characters, what effect does it have on you? Are you do you have different? Are, are you like the Nicki Minaj where you have different characters, or does it just kind of liberate you in a way? You know, like what what is if I don't want to I don't want to like put ideas in your head because I want to know. I'm yeah, no, no, just no. Like, what is the effect it has? Yeah, on? no, it's definitely not characters. It's different parts of me. Okay. Um, I. So there's a there's a a, a a a saying that says you know if I knew then what I know now, mine is I know then what I know now right now, because I'm in touch with these different parts of myself. So if my inner child is triggered because something has taken place, you know I treat matter of fact I treat my my only child like my child. Mm -hmm. So we're really not ignoring, you know, we're communicating, we're talking. Yeah, I have, um, I have notes from, you've talked about it in the mm -hmm. past. And that's from, you know, just being in therapy, you know, asking me certain questions. How old are you emotionally, mentally, spiritually, all that stuff. And your child gives you advice. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I have to, because I also have to remember, too, is I learned even as a teenager that my my parents didn't have all the answers, you know, and I also did not hold that against them because they were utilizing what it is that they had at that time. And that didn't take away the value of the things that they instilled in me that I still use to this day. Mm. You know, it's just that there's always been for me, I've been fortunate, fortunate enough to have a village and a community around me that picked up those batons where they could only take it so far. Mm, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Can we dive into your album Wonderlust? Yes. So we're we're featuring the album Wonderlust. We have clips playing throughout this mm -hmm. that people are gonna can hear. Um, coming into each segment, we have clips that we've played, so they've already gotten a taste of the the songs. Mm -hmm. But I really want to get into the, some of these lyrics. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's see. It's twelve songs. Mm -hmm. Can we start with Boundaries? The title of the song is Boundaries Featuring Tired and Exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of the song. Boundaries Featuring Tired and Exhausted. It. It's funny because my father was up there asking me, so who is tired and exhausted? I need their their paperwork. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> For the splits. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> What's their IPI? Their IPI? Are they ASCAP? <laughs> oh, that was so funny. Yes, uh, but yeah. But you gotta set the uh, the lyrics. Gotta set these boundaries. If I don't, you'll do it for me. Mm -hmm. It's given a hell no. It's given a hell no. A lot of times we we think that no is a is a bad word, and it's not. It's not <laughs> a bad word. It's it's a complete sentence. You really don't need to say anything afterwards. And a lot of times we over explain ourselves because we don't want to come off as the bad guy yeah. or you know as rude. However, it's not. It's not what we say, it's how we say it. And we also are not in control of someone else's emotions. Like, you need to be able to regulate yourself. Of course, that's not everybody's story. However, as long as you're not leading with, I'm trying to hurt you, I'm trying to cause harm or any kind of discourse, then my answer is still going to be no, <laughs> regardless. Yeah, lyric-wise, you say, why was it no sufficient? Mm-hmm. 
wasn't because I don't want to good, good enough, enough for you. Yeah. It's a hell no. Yeah. And then I love these lyrics. Hell no, 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 no. In case they didn't hear you. Do you just like crack up writing these songs? Like, oh, I I entertain myself very very much so. And and is that a signal to you of like okay yes this needs to, we need to put this out? Like that, is it a yeah? Like I'll laugh, but then I also like get a couple of you know I'll filter it through some folks you know just to see if they if 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 I if they get the same mm. giggles you know. And then how is it live performing it live? Oh, I get to really bring to life some of the things that maybe I didn't think of when I recorded it and so that also leaves the element of surprise for the audience mm. live you know like going into you know uh, Barbie Barbie Girl um, during Little Bit where that arrangement of the B section in that song was inspired um, where she goes come on Barbie let's go party I, 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 yeah. and then I'm doing my um, uh-huh uh-huh yeah yeah uh-huh <laughs> like that's so '90s dance, like and yeah. that's some of my fate, like favorite, like Le, wait, 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 Labouche and oh yeah, and Alice DJ, yeah, yeah. La, and da, da, de, da, la, da. be my lover. Oh yes, mm. yeah. Would you ever jump on a house track? Absolutely, I have done. Have you? I yeah, heard. free free fall by K Trinata. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Definitely K Trinata. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I have a couple of, a and track. I have a couple of other um. House joints that I've done uh, with uh, some underground artists, so okay, it's very much if it's dope, then I'll hop on it. So doesn't matter if you have three three hundred thousand followers or three hundred. You mentioned earlier about mango butter, so I'm gonna jump to that because that was mm-hmm. definitely one of the ones on my list. <laughs> Ooh, these lyrics. <laughs> I first I want to start the last chorus, the runs that you do when you say. <laughs> I don't think you heard me yet. Yeah. Like, look, I have it bold and highlighted. With the harmonies. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, oh. I was like, oh, yeah. damn. <laughs> but what was cracking me up is the, the pre chorus. If you take me through the night, get to. You too. Rubik's Take, Cube. Yes, Rubik's Cube. Be, be, Beetlejuice. Uh-huh. Be me all the light. Be, be me all the light. Be, lead me all the light or something like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Beetlejuice. Oh, 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 hey, oh, then Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we got to talk about them. We got to talk about Brussels sprouts because I heard you, you mentioned Brussels sprouts in another interview. Mm-hmm. And the guy kind of looked at you like, what? And you're like, you know, it's just, I just wanted to say something irrelevant. I'm like, what is oh, his oh, obsession oh, with oh. Brussels sprouts? No, uh, that was uh, Amanda when she was talking oh, about, was oh, yeah, because you know, I'm a, I'm a Pisces or something like that. Oh, I'm, oh, sorry, oh, I'm an asparagus. I'm an, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I just thought we were naming just random stuff. <laughs> okay, can you tell me about this song though? Like, what inspired Mango Butter? Uh, so, first and foremost. And what are your favorite lyrics? My favorite Mango lyrics, uh, You Want My Moo. I got shit too. <laughs> Do we want to tell people what your mood is? It's like <laughs> <laughs> it's it's pretty much. I think the the mumbling and the way I'm mumbling is insinuating this. This is what I have to offer. You can't come half stepping. You know, I'm I'm confident in my femininity as well as my masculinity. You know. Get on my level, ho. You know, uh, if I could bottle this up and sell it, I, I win a Nobel Peace Prize. Like, that's just what it insinuates. But whatever it is, where you are, you know, it kind of speaks to that. So, yeah. What? <laughs> I, there were supposed to be lyrics to this, but somebody did not get me their portion of the song back in a timely <laughs> fashion. So I oh, just shit. left the mumbling in there because in my mind, I'm like, ain't nobody listen to the lyrics anyway. Just get you a good hook and then we'll think about heaven later. Yeah, because I'm looking at some of these and I'm like, am I missing something here? Is this like slang that I don't know about? No, I'm going to ask them. I, y'all, the main if you can take it out on any money made an edge, like <laughs> oh bacon taco maver. Yeah, <laughs> what the fuck is that? Your <laughs> beet juicing. Oh hey, like I'm trying. I'm trying to write out mumbling, 
<laughs> that is the oh god, I was cracking up writing uh, writing those lyrics out. And you just put it out. And the cool thing is, like, if 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 we go to like say your Spotify, that this is one of your most streamed songs. Yes, it's over a million, be, couple million, yes, point six or if, something. My my first most streamed song by myself is Sam's Vibe. But then after that, it's Mango Butter. And so I feel like Mango Butter is about to in the next. Do you think it's the chorus? It's absolutely the chorus. Yeah. Because all, all you need is that. Like I Can we hear it a little bit? Yes. Of it? I'm a bad bitch and I'm that nigga. <laughs> I don't think you heard me. Yeah. 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 And the ending, you do some like spoken word kind of uh, thing. I'm that end. nigga because I am that bitch. And because I am that bitch. Because I am that nigga. And the that bitch and the that nigga that reside in me coincide and together fellowshipping as one to assist me in being a bad bitch as much as... <clears throat> <laughs> all that stuff I forgot oh yeah I had to mention that too about NPR because you did that on the NPR you did those high notes uh, in a what, the screen, vibe. what is that it's a um, whistle but the whistles I, I you did that uh, you I didn't, didn't do that mean, tiny you did that tiny yes just. I didn't mean to hit two notes I didn't mean to do that <laughs> I just it felt, was a fun moment though. oh yeah no I felt I said oh it's open because I'm tired so let me go ahead and just reach I was like he could do that too damn <laughs> Damn. And of course, my one of my favorite parts of Tiny Desk was me and Devin doing the operatic ending of Free Fall. And that was Buddha. The bass player was like, no, you got to do that. Do not forget to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Were you, you had said in another interview that this was the first time you were nervous in yeah, years. Yeah, like 12 years. And I have to say, when, whenever, the, <laughs> whenever the, your Tiny Desk opens... And they're showing everybody to me. I could tell everybody was like uh, nervous. It was you like, all sounded great. Yeah, it didn't affect the performance, but I could tell y'all were like, "Oh shit!" Like this is we're doing this. Yeah, and that was Frank's that um, on drums. That was the second time being there because he had just did um, Badu's uh, Tiny Desk. So, and I do believe no, and Sam actually had done that before with Mariba. So, uh, yeah, so that was actually a couple folks, like, second time on there. That was my first. But I think it was more so Bobby's introduction to the performance, you know, saying he's been here since the very beginning. He's seen every Tiny Desk. He's seen amazing performances. He said, this was special. And so it just, I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> So I was just like, I ain't got nothing to say. Let me make sure I introduce everybody. And let's get through all these songs. I can turn this into an he episode of VH1 before. Storytellers afterwards, explaining all this shit. But I, I got to get all this content out. He said all that before you started? There was just a whole, just a heartfelt just speech. And I was just like... And then the floor was yours to and deliver. the floor was mine. But you did deliver. I did. I did. Yeah. It, it was... was and I'm and I'm I'm glad that that's why I don't I don't get nervous for the most part because I'm not up there by myself. And then also it's the concept of there's a room full of people that are here to celebrate me being myself. What mm -hmm. is there to be nervous about? Like they're rooting for me. They're all rooting for me. <laughs> what was it about that that made you nervous? I mean, because I also I'm just. <sighs> Do you only get one take? No, so we did a run through Okay And then we did The actual recording Okay And as soon as we were done Buddha talking about some Okay that was a nice Take Now let's go ahead And really record I was like sir No We actually recorded <laughs> I thought that we were Just doing a dress rehearsal You were like That was it That was it Get Where out were of you here. Yeah no But it was It was just the fact that I Not only Got to this space Being myself grinding and hustling and being consistent with posting content because I grew up on the internet. Like, mm -hmm. my entire 20s, I came on scene, like, shortly after I turned 19. And people have seen me since then. And even then, I've been able to have some sort of control of, you know, my narrative or certain information. You know, like, TMZ ain't outside of my window, child. Like, mm. so I, <laughs> I kind of worry about that in, in that sense. But just, If they were, how would you treat them? Like would you would you play into it? Would you would you give them some comedic moments, or would you kind of hide from them, or just go about your day? I I don't know because that I I can't even speak about situations that I've never been in, yeah, you know. And yeah. I don't know who I'm going to be at that time. Even if yeah. even if I'm me right now, I'm not going to be the same person tomorrow. You know, I'm always in a constant state of of growing and 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 realizing 
Girl. Okay. <laughs> you want to FaceTime on air? That'd be fun. <laughs> that was Mel. Yeah, that we was, got that, a co-host. That was Mel, the one who who suggested that I did Uncle Bobby for uh, NPR because I was going to do uh, Popeye. And she was like, no, nah, no. Nah. She said, if we're going to do, if we're going to have Uncle Bobby in, in, in the chamber, we need to do it for, for, for NPR because that's way more legendary and yeah. they've already rebooted the show. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Mm-hmm. We should end there. Yeah. We're at the mm-hmm. end of the segment. Yeah. For everyone listening, if you came partially through this conversation, my guest is Duran Bernard and we're featuring your album, Wonderlust. Yeah. We're, we're talking about your career. But for me, what I want people to know is, okay, you've heard this on Adobe Radio, but you can catch the full video version on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, anywhere you get your podcasts. Mm-hmm. It's there. And how can they connect with you online? What's your socials? So I'm on uh, Instagrams and the Twitters, okay? Your mama named your Twitter. That's what I'm going to call you. Uh, mm. I'm on the TikToks. Mm. Uh, do you do the dances on TikTok? You know, I, I've been wanting to do that. There's a Rihanna one going around. You got to do that one at I least. I do that. I love her. Um, we, yeah, on Facebook, uh, YouTube, all that stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm not hard to find. And you're touring. Are you, are yes. you done now? Because you just got back from some gigs, right? Yeah, so I just did the second leg of my third tour. Ooh, and then yay. I'll be doing the third leg of that uh, over in Europe in November. Okay. So I'll be hitting uh, Paris, London, Rotterdam, Amsterdam, and Berlin. Yay. And then I'm also doing uh, the Nostalgia Jazz Festival in Cincinnati on the 14th of October. And then I'm doing a One Music Fest in Atlanta on the 29th. I'm, on, I'm playing on Kendrick's Night. And uh, Janet Jackson is also headlining as well. Oh, that's going to be good. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. We'll check you out online. We're going to link to all your socials on the videos on all streaming. Marvelous. Okay. Thank you for coming on Life them. Thank you for having me. Everyone, we'll see you next time. Hey. Yay. Marvelous. That was lovely. No, that was good.